goodness, how are y'all doing? Woohoo! It is so awesome to be with you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, John. Thank you, Green Biz, for having me. I just I love being able to be here and share what we're finding. One of the things that Shelton Group does on an ongoing basis is we survey Americans to get inside their heads about a whole range of sustainability issues. And we've been doing that for a really long time, 15 years. So I'm gonna share with you some of our latest insights related to what we're all here to do over the next two and a half days uh, as of February of this year. But first, I'm gonna start with you guys. So show of hands, how many of you think recycling is good for the environment? All right, I, most of us agree, and uh, like a whopping 95% of people in America feel the same way. 95% of us say, oh yes, recycling helps the environment. And in fact, 75% of us say that recycling is the best thing we can do for the environment. Is recycling the best thing we can do for the environment? No. Okay, so why do they think that? <laughs> because we've told them to think that. Y'all, for decades, I mean, literally decades, we've been telling them recycling equals eco-friendly. We put the chasing arrows everywhere we can. We put helpful messaging on our packaging, encouraging people to recycle. We have invented an entire new program to show people how and where to recycle appropriately, not to mention all the advertising that we push out there telling people, please recycle. So not surprisingly, when you ask people, what do you want in a package? The number one thing they say is, oh, I want a package that is recyclable, followed by, I want a package made from recycled materials. It's the, it's the Henry Ford thing. If I'd asked people what they wanted, they would have told me a faster horse, right? So I'm just, I want to put this out there for all of you that do regular surveys and go, yep, see, people still want a recycled package. It's because that's what we've told them to think. Like, that's the paradigm that we've given them. All right, so you may be saying, well, Awesome, you know, people think recycling is good. They think doing their part is good. What's the problem? This is good, right? Well, it's not good. It is a problem for many of you in this room. And so let's get into why. And we're gonna get into why by first setting up the promise and then talking about what the problem with the promise is. And then we're gonna talk about what to do about it. All right, so the promise that we've made to all of our friends and neighbors, all the people in America, and frankly, all the people of the world is you don't have to feel bad about all that stuff you buy. You just put it in the blue bin and it goes to a magical place called Away. <laughs> and it becomes something else and we're all good. It's great, right? And man, 70% of us, I'm sorry, 76% of us have bought in. 76% of Americans say recycling makes me feel better about all the stuff I buy. So that's the promise, keep on buying, and Lord knows we need you to keep buying because 70% of our GDP comes from consumption. So keep buying, throw it in the blue bin, it's all good. That's the promise. Except that we're starting to not believe the promise. So back in the before times in 2019, 14% uh, of us said, I'm not really confident that what I put in the recycling bin is actually being recycled. By 2020, that was up to 23%. And as of February of this year, that's up to 30%. So 30% of people in America who are not confident that what they put in the recycling bin is actually being recycled. And if you ask them, hey, is the recycling system working well? 49% flat out say no. And PS, the more they know about how the recycling system works, the less confident they are. So the answer is not, oh, let's educate them. Let's, let's educate them about how the system works. No, don't do that because, oh, that makes it really bad. <laughs> all right, so you may be thinking, well, this is all about plastics, right? That's the problem. And in truth, 76% of us are really freaked out about plastics in the ocean. On a scale of one to 10, 76% of us rate ourselves a 10 in terms of being extremely concerned about plastics in the ocean. And, and my gosh, of all the environmental issues we test, that is the thing we are most freaked out about. Further, 90% of us today believe that there's more plastic in all of our waterways than ever before. So yes, plastic is part of the equation, it's part of the issue, but it's not just plastic. 52% of us are, are confident that what we put in the recycling bin in terms of paper is being recycled. That means 48% of us are not confident that the paper we put in our recycling bin is being recycled. So it's not just plastic, it's all materials. We think it's not working. 
So let me recap for a minute before we move on to what we're going to do about it. Recycling is our guilt dissuasion system. It is our get out of guilt free card system. And we like it. We don't want to feel bad about the stuff we buy. And we do kind of want to keep buying stuff. So we like it. And in fact, 42% of us want to be seen as someone who's buying eco-friendly products. Let me unpack that for a minute. 42% want to be seen as someone who's buying eco-friendly products. So that means like if we think I'm a good person, so good people are good to the environment and good people recycle, oh, recycling's not working. So maybe I'm not good for the environment. So maybe I'm not a good person. And oh my God, I'm really uncomfortable now. So that's, ha that's what's happening for people is as they realize this promise of recycling is breaking down, it's causing them a question like, how are they being in the world? It's a real challenge for them. They're looking for a new hall pass. They're looking for a way to not feel bad about participating in the economy. And therein lies the opportunity for everyone in this room, the opportunity that this whole conference is about, an opportunity to both change the system and change the message. It is what my talk is about. It's an opportunity to teach old dogs new tricks. All right, and we're all old dogs too, by the way. It's not just all the people out there. It's like, it's everybody. It's about system change. And it's already started. I mean, you guys, you, you can see it out in the hallway. You're seeing all kinds of brands that are rolling out circular models. It's happening all the time. Starbucks is rolling out a, um, a refillable cup. Uh, SC Johnson is rolling out concentrate versions of their iconic brands. The Body Shop has put refilling stations at 800 stores around the world. Levi's rolled out Buy Better, uh, buy better Wear Long which means basically, hey, we're going to sell you more durable, less stuff. And our friends at Eastman of the value chain, they figured out how to make circular, reusable plastics right now. So this is real. It's happening. The next step for all of you in this room is to biggie size this. Work together. Work with your suppliers. Work with your competitors. Work with your associations to change the system. That's what there is to do. And then engage citizens to be a part of it. Now, you're going to face naysayers in your organization. I've been at this a really long time, and I can't tell you how many times I've heard, oh, we tried that 10 years ago, and that did not work. You're going to hear that. But what you need to do is tell people, no, no, we've created behavior change before. We've led with messaging. We can do this. Back in the 1930s, we didn't actually need any messaging. We were in the middle of a Great Depression. People reduced and reused out of necessity. By the 1940s, we were kind of tired of reducing and reusing. We didn't want to keep doing it. So the government rolled out a campaign called Use It Up, Wear It Out, Make It Do to keep us reusing and reducing for the war effort. Now, by the 1950s and 60s, it was like to hell with all that, you know, all that conserving. Let's just, let's just buy everything we want and throw it away. It's magical. It's all about convenience, baby. And this is where we begin to see plastics get positioned as the great liberator. It's awesome, right? Uh, all right. So in the 1970s, we had to have a bit of a course correction because we all took that throw it away thing a little too seriously. Um, so we had to stop. We had to stop the littering problem. And so we invented a new put down for people that litter. We started calling them litter bugs and we started positioning littering as disrespectful. Right. So we began to curtail the littering problem. Well, then by the 80s and 90s, it was like, wow, we still want people to buy stuff, but maybe not so much stuff. So let's let's talk to them about reducing, reusing and recycling. And so then we, we really started pushing that message and went, wait, we might be able to actually sell them more stuff if we really focus in on that recycling message. So for the last 20 years, we've been focused on recycling and kind of parting ways with that reduce and reuse piece of the equation. So over the last 80 years, we've gone from use it up, wear it out, to buy whatever you want and throw it away, to don't be a litter bug, to reduce, reuse, and recycle, finally to recycle. So now it's time to change that. It's time to come full circle and get back to use it up and wear it out. The discomfort that our friends and neighbors are beginning to feel about their contribution to the waste problem is not unlike the discomfort that y'all all expressed when you saw this, right? That it's uncomfortable. And y'all messaging, behaviors, system change, all of that is about context. And much like the context of the 1950s and 60s made these messages totally okay, but really painful now, 
That's the context that's shifting in America. The context is shifting such that people are beginning to feel uncomfortable participating in a single use, fast fashion, unfettered consumption economy. We don't wanna do it anymore. So the brands that figure out how to figure out or how to roll out and engage people in circular systems, those are the brands that are gonna succeed. The brands that give people a new hall pass, that give people a way to go, look, I bought this, it's refillable. Look, it's reusable. That's the new virtue signal. The brands that figure that out are the brands that are gonna win. Conversely, the brands that continue our linear economy, those are the brands that consumers are gonna start to back away from, like, I don't want to be associated with you. Those are the brands that people are gonna increasingly see as distasteful, like as distasteful as a baby wrapped in plastic. So, if you don't remember anything else from my talk, remember, don't let your brand be a baby wrapped in plastic. <laughs> Have a great conference.